Well, hey folks, Fat Guy Flies RC. How y'all doing? Coming to you from the man cave. We're going to be putting together the X-Fly Twin Otter 1800 millimeter um, float plane. Actually, not a float plane. Um, utility plane. And one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to put, put your nose gear and your main end gear first. Now, there's one baggie that's on the bottom of the box contains your nose gear. It also contains a small bag with... Looks like six little bitty screws. Now that's the screws you're going to be needing to attach it. But they're in the bag with this, so be careful not to throw that away. Pull that out of the bag, unfurl your, your one piece um, wire, okay? Allow that to feed in through the nose. There's plenty, there's like, you can sleep inside this thing. Just let that drop down in there, and then you let that drop in there like that. Okay, now you're going to take small Phillips head screwdriver. Everything else is going to be a metric screwdriver. What did I just do with them screws? Oh, I dropped them. They're on the ground. See, you got to be careful. All right. I highly suggest little metal trays, little magnetic trays to put your screws in. Okay. Also, if you purchase this model, buy yourself an extra set of props. It's just because just as soon as you don't, you're going to need it. Okay, which I did. I got myself an extra set of props. All right. From what I can tell, there's absolutely no glue anywhere in the assembly of this model, okay? I do like the fact that this is one piece, that way in case you mess it up, all you gotta do is buy that whole that piece again. This is the only suspension gear on the model. Everything else is the heavy grade wire. So, that we looked at in the unboxing. Okay, you're going to end up with two extra screws, or they may be needed later on, but for now, just put them aside, leave them in that magnetic tray. All right, these two, this section here, this is for floats, leave that alone, okay? Go ahead and get yourself out a two millimeter hex drive. There's this plate right here, four screws, you're going to remove that. them in the magnetic trays you take them out. These are looks like either eight or ten millimeter machine screws. They're going into metal, which I love that. Metal into metal. I wish all manufacturers of all planes, so I know it adds a little bit of weight and a little bit of cost, but anytime you're putting metal in a, you know, a metal screw into a pl hard plastic housing, you got to be careful not to over tighten. Oh, it'll last forever, but you can over tighten it. You don't want to. Now, if you're going to look here, pull this little, this little tab out. Okay. And you see there's a little notch there. A little notch there. That's where your servo lead would go through for your floats to, for the operational rudder. Now you're going to grab your landing gear, wherever it is, which is back here, okay? It is obvious how it fits together, okay? These flarings here go to the rear of the plane, and that just drops in there like that. You're going to seat it into place. Take that piece that you just took out and just reverse that process, okay? Put in those same four screws that you just removed are now going to secure this very heavy duty gear back into the fuse. I always like, anytime I'm putting anything like this together that's multi-threaded, I like to crisscross. That's just me, that's the way I was taught that it provides, like when you put a tire on a car, put the wheel back on, you, you have your, you know, six lugs, crisscross them as you put them back in. That, puts it back in evenly. 
You see, I can kind of crank down a little bit on that because I'm going metal screw into a metal housing back there. Okay. Now you do what you want, but that's just my advice. Something I was taught to do when I used to work in a machine at a, at a mechanic shop, working on cars when I was a kid, 80,000 years ago. I just like the fact that I got a metal screw going into a metal housing, housed in hard plastic. That just screams to me longevity and ruggedness. All right, that gear is now in there and you now have no need for the stand. You can move that out of your way now. And we can turn our attention to the rear of the plane. All right, now, see we got this big opening here, right? Got hard plastic here, hard plastic on top. Okay, I'm gonna grab your huge Vertical stabilizer, vertical stabilizer. Fish out the rudder lead that's also got two wires. You're thinking, well, rudder is just one, but it controls the light up top. And then the other one is labeled elevator. Okay, so you're going to want to fish. Oh, there's a spar that goes in here. Oh, okay, that explains that third spar. The shorter, thicker spar goes in that hole. Okay. Has an obvious stopping point. See the hole there? I'm going to fish that in there. Let your wires. Okay. I want to kind of let gravity be your friend here. Okay. okay. Go to that big top cavernous section there. So hold on. Before we go any further, wait a second. How are they going to hook up? Hmm. Hmm. You better look at this. I thought I had this memorized. Okay. Ah. Got these great big leads. Okay. One is labeled rudder. One is labeled elevator. Good thing we looked at that. Tied in on themselves. Okay, all right, this is a great time to have what I like to call a go get em wire. Okay, take your go get em wire, which and otherwise you're gonna have to let, you know what, let's pretend you don't have one. Okay, we'll just pretend you don't have one. Okay, and we're gonna take this long wire, we're gonna pick this fuselage up, and we'll let them two pigtails fish down to that end, leaving that piece of tape that's on them there. Turn them all upside down because I want them to come out at this end here. Okay, now I can take a tool or maybe even that spar or something. Try to get a hold of them. Come on, baby, come on. All right, get something, get something else here. Something I can use to grab them with. I'll just use that go get wire, I guess. Use the angle on there. There's one there. And there's one there. All right. Now, I've got to hold them. All right, get that. Not much, much, much room left. Put that carbon spar through there. We'll let it angle off to one side. Okay. I'm going to make my connections. This is obvious. The one is labeled elevator. I'm going to find my elevator. Okay. Now, anytime you're hooking two servo leads together, let's get where you can see this. Okay. Anytime you're hooking two servo leads together, I don't care who makes the servos, what brand they are, you're always going to hook light to light, dark to dark. Okay? So when you get all done, 
Well, I'm glad I caught that, you know. This is how that should look. Okay. See, it says light to light, to light, dark to dark. That's how that should look. Okay. I'm trying to give you all a warning here. I'm going to hold on to your lunch. Let's grab a hold of our rudder lead and do the same thing. Light to light, dark to dark. Make sure that's seated in there real good. You'll feel it kind of snap in, at least mine did. And as you can see, look, I got it backwards. See, see, what would have happened? My light would not have worked and my rudder would not have worked. I'm busy talking, I'm not paying attention. So take that back out, light to light. Dark to dark, and that is how it should end up looking. Light to light, dark to dark. All right. Now, take that big conglomeration of wire, let the thing, I let it sit on my head there, okay? I'll let that fish back down in there. Let gravity be your friend. And let that whole rudder fall into place. Now you're going to take two of the, should be the 10 millimeter, uh, no, seven millimeter screws, which are going to be smaller, smaller hex head screws, two millimeter hex head. One goes in the top. Okay, yeah, you're right. It, no, it's these. They're slightly longer. It's the middle size screws. You have really long ones, you have some shorter ones, and then you have the, sh the even shorter ones. They're even, they're even, you got the meat, this is the medium sized ones here. Yeah, that's it right there. Metal into metal, so support, support it with your. Sorry if I'm a little off camera. Okay. All right, turn the model over. Okay. All right, same deal, same dealio. Okay, you've got hard plastic here. That's where the hole is. Let me back up just a little bit so you can take in what all I'm doing here. Two millimeter hex drive. It has a recess in there. Support it with your with the bottom of the other hand. Okay. Very obvious stopping point. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Come on. Where is it? Okay, there it is. All right. Now, get that back up. Take your thinner. Wing spar. Fish it through the back of your elevator. Where your elevator's gonna go. Okay? Find your elevator hats. Okay. One should have a control horn side. Okay. Control horn side. They're only gonna fit one way. Slide that up onto its spar like that. Okay, fish it in the like that. Take the other side. And just so you're curious, which is the top and the bottom, the top is solid, the bottom has these fill points where it shows you where the uh, spar goes through. All models are that way. I've never seen a model that wasn't that way. Okay. Kind of hold you because those both those have the elevator are going to key in together. And if you got if you got that, then you know you got them keyed in correctly. All right, now that's going to show you how that should look. When you get all done, after you, before you put the screws in, that should look flush on both sides right there. Okay. And you know, I think at this point, 
I will put the font stand back so you all can see what it is I'm doing. Okay. And like I said, I'm not always all that scripted. All right, you're going to take four of the smallest screws the kit provides of the machine screws. Not the little Phillips head, but the machine screws. Okay. And they're going to get fished in. Okay. On the top side. And there's a recess point. Remember, you're going metal screw into a metal housing. Trying to film and do this at the same time. And while I'm saying you're saying, well, you're not really having to do much for filming, yeah, I have to try to pay attention to the angle that, so you can see what it is I'm doing. not want to line up on it. So we'll try this one here. Alright, when you start seeing that plastic dent in, you are plenty tight. And you know, I don't see metal down there. There may be metal down there. I'm just not seeing it. Ouch. But then again, that is shaded right there right now. More than likely, these little parts here where I'm just, you know, mundanely screwing in, putting screws in, you, you get the idea. I'll try to support it with the back of your hand if you can. Okay. Well, that's not one, though. Seat. All right, let's leave that one alone. Try to get this other one to seat. May have to fight with it. Sometimes you have to do that. This is part of modeling. Okay, this is just like putting a wing on. You get one good screw secured, and then you may have to push against push against it and use it as a leverage point to put the other screw in. Yeah. See, that's exactly what I had to do. In order to get that one to seat, I had to pull against that top screw and push the elevator back to get that back one to seat in good. Yeah, and that is, yeah, that's in there. So now, probably have to do the same thing with this one, but trying to do it to where you, you know, I'm pushing back a little bit. Okay. Okay, finally, yeah, okay. You, you'll know when it gets bite. Okay, I'm starting to see a little bit where the plastic denting in there. That's when I know I stop there. All right. One thing is that bottom screw is not feeling tight. Let me see what's going on with that. Well, maybe, maybe it's okay. get it back out so hold on <laughs> sometimes just simply taking the screw back out
Okay. And yeah, there's a little bit of plastic on there. I'm just going to trade it for a different screw. Okay. All right, we'll pause right there while I figure this out. I'm just, I, I, I've dropped a screw somewhere. Got a screw loose, man. All right, we're back. I guess I dropped a wing screw somewhere because I'm going to have to come up with my own. Because I only got three wing screws and I dropped one somewhere. My metal tray thing failed me. So, <laughs> I don't know what I did with it. Well, at this point, but I've got tons of screws. Um, remove your... Screws that are inside the, um, where the struts attach. Okay, from the bottom, same screwdriver. You don't have to worry about other screwdrivers. Go ahead and take them out. Now these have a rounded head on them. Set them off to the side. Okay. off the side and they're they're they say they have a, a rounded head on them okay they come out right there where that strut structure is go ahead and take your struts then and they are labeled right wing left wing okay so if I'm looking at the model looking at the model so basically looking at the rear so this would be on the right side would be the left wing so I'm gonna slide that in there Take that same screw, and I'm going to put it back in there. Oh yeah, that, that has a definite stopping point. Okay, I'm going to take the other one, right wing, let's see, if you're looking from the rear of the airplane, that's the right wing there, I, I, I guess that's how you do it, I might have it backwards, if not, I'll know if I go to put the wings on, they don't fit right. Alright, the wheel's in the way. This is more like why they want you to do this. Okay, well so. Okay, that's in there. Turn them all over. Now you should have this Y looking configuration there. Going to take your big wing spar. Okay. All right. Now look. Go ahead and let that big nest of wires fall. Paying attention to your XT60 connectors. Okay. You're going to grab the appropriate wing, but can only fit one way. Remember, there's no servo leads or anything to hook up here. Okay. And you're going to go ahead and remove this screw here as soon as you find the tool. Okay. I'm going to remove this screw here. But I like the idea of them keeping the screws. Go ahead and screwing them in. Okay. That is just... Go ahead and grab your... XT60, see you got your XT60 there. It only fits one way. This should be the only time you're going. Just want to, okay, it doesn't push back any further in there. Okay. All right, let it connect and then let it pull itself out and then then grab a hold of your fingers and make sure you got a good snug fit because you're not going to be 
hooking this back up again unless you want to take these wings off. And then personally, with my truck, I'll put this plane in sideways in the bed of the truck and I won't have to worry about it. Okay. Alright. Get that lined up. Line up your spar underneath. Which that should... I did have the wings wrong. The opening is different. Okay, well, see, I was wrong. Right wing, left wing. So let's pause while I undo that and fix that. But these are things you learn. All righty, I reversed them. Okay, go back, put this wing back on. Remember, gonna fish your XT60 out, get them connected up. They only fit one way, so. Make sure you got them hooked up correctly. And it's a nice tight fit, which is good. What you want. Oh yeah. Now that just that strut just fit right down in there. Just as pretty as you please. Okay. So now take your screw that came out of that wing. And I'm just gonna put my head there. These screws, and like I say, these these struts, they are functional. You do need them. Get that thread in there, right? You may have to fight with it to get that. Just get that there. You, there you go. Just find that sweet spot. Oh yeah, I love that sound. You think, oh, it's annoying. No. That's the sound of security. That means that wing is on there, okay? So now all I gotta do is these top screws. And of course, the wings want to drop with all the weights here. Okay, let's get this up. Or we're right. Grab my wing screws. Okay. I'm gonna rip one, I'll show you. Okay, show you what I'm doing. Just say we get one in there to hold this wing on. Okay. Oh, baby. Work with me now. That screw, that one's on there. Okay, you got these top. Oh, I'm gonna grab the screws here. All right, I'm gonna take the shorter screw. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna be just fine. Okay, Get that extras. I'm gonna put my leg on it and push that side in there. The thinner part of the wing, anyways. I'll put my hand behind it and support that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That, that, that's how that fits in there. Yeah. yeah. That's nice and tight. You see that that screw, that plastic starting to dent in? Don't go any tighter. All right, that's in there. Okay. Now we got one whole side. Of all that's on, and that wing is on there. So let's turn it around. That's what it is. You put one long screw in the front, and then the shorter screw in the back, which makes sense because that is the thinner part of the wing. Back there. All right, now you grab the other wing. Okay. Okay. And remember, you got to remove that strut screw. First, I didn't do it off camera. I try to do as much on camera as I can. And, you know, sometimes the monotonous stuff, like balancing a prop, because that's kind of time consuming. All right, now, got your connectors there. 
Got your quick connect and you got your XT60, okay? Try to get a hold of that XT60 if you can. Or either, or let the, okay, do that. I gotta pull it out, okay? There's its mate, okay? And just try to hold, hold it to where, you know, let, let the thing balance on your shoulder, whatever you gotta do, where you get those two to line up. It's a tight fitting. XT60, but like I said, that's a good thing. That is a good thing. Fish that back in there in its hole. Okay. And if you do like I do, and if you screw up and put the struts on the wrong side, you'll know it right here is where you'll know. Because it won't it won't seat in here correctly. So here we go. Now let's go ahead and take that screw we took out. Hold the wing up with your head. Okay. And I, you know, folks, I try not to let these videos take too long, but you know, when you're a one man show with this stuff, you'll have anybody to hand you stuff. You kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I know, I'm just wah, wah, wah. But, oh yeah, like I said, that's a good sound. That is a good sound. That's what you want. Okay. All right. Now we can actually let the thing get level. Okay. Take one of your long, longest screws. Which, okay, that's what it is. I don't have, okay, yeah, there it is, it is. Take your longest screw. It's going to go in the front with the thickest part of the wing. And then one of the shorter screws is going to go back here. I didn't put the wing spar in. <laughs> I know y'all are home going, wait a minute. Um, take that screw out. Take that screw out. I thought I put that wing spar in. My wings, if I would have pulled any heavy G's, you know, done a sudden loop or thing like that, my wing would have just snapped in half. And I would have said, what happened? What happened? Undo that super tight. Put in your wing spar. I meant to do that, right? Because um, I want to show you what you're supposed to do. Good thing I caught it now. All right, now. I'm going to say a little bit easier now. i got something to, to rest upon. You know. All right, we're back. I don't know how the camera, but it died. But that's okay. All right, I do have all the screws I need. I don't know what my problem was. Found my other wing screw, but I, I've got two, in the, two long ones in the front and two long ones are the, yeah, I got two long ones in the front and two shorter ones in the back, but it's more than meets at the bottom, so I'm not worried about it. Not a not a not a game changer, not a good deal breaker. But the long one always goes to the front of the wing where you've got the thickest part, the thickest core of the wing. Okay. Alright, you may have to oh press it in there with your body to get that seated right. But once you get one screw in there good, okay, then that gives you a pivot point or hard point to work with. Once you see that plastic starting to dent in there, don't go in, okay, right? Right there. All right. Now I'm going to take the medium-sized screw. Okay. And oh, sorry, wrong one. And I'm going to put it back here. Now, see, got a little bit of a gap here, so I'm going to get my screw in there, provided I get it lined up on the tool correctly. Okay. Take my body. I'm going to kind of push that wing back a little bit with my leg, 
using that front as the pivot, and that helps to line that back. Yeah, see now that's biting in there. All right, now, now I can put my hand behind there or underneath there, kind of support it, watching for that plastic to kind of dent in a little bit. There it goes. There we go. Now, our wings are on there, nice and strong. Okay. Almost have a completed aircraft. Okay. It's a good sized airplane, too. I mean, it's not had, obviously, I've had much bigger, but it's a good sized aircraft. All right. We're not putting the props on, but I will show you the basic arrangement on that. Okay. Put the back down there. Remember, you got an XT90 connector. Tongue and groove on that. There's a nose cone. Okay. Decal side down. And that is the basic build, other than the props on there. You know what? Let's just let's go ahead and do that. Just so you undo your prop adapter. Okay. Take both of them off. Remember, I don't put any length. I know the rudder and the elevator are not hooked up. I don't do that until I do radio. By the way, I'll be using a Spectrum XT, um, a, um, a Spectrum AR620 and tinless receiver. No gyro, no kind of uh, stabilization of any type. But this is a big stable aircraft. You're not shouldn't need anything like that. Okay, now look. Now there, you've got screws in there. That's the front front of the nose cone that screws in. To the front of the prop adapters. Okay. You get you get uh, three of them, so you get one extra. So don't lose it. You only get one extra. Back plate. All right. These little bags are handy too. Save me put parts in. All right. You're gonna take. Remember, I showed you on the front of the motor it has the, like keys places, and look on there that has a like a. A pattern on it. Okay. That fits on there like that. You're going to grab one of your props and that's going to fit on there. And if you're putting a prop on, they always turn counterclockwise. So if it's turning towards you, see how that blade is turning towards you? It would push air back. That's just how you imagine that. Push that all the way on there. Grab your prop adapter. Okay, you're gonna grab a one of your tools, like one of these things. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the props on. Just gonna be very careful. And you're gonna push, push that through there. And I like to grab a hold of two props, and or, or as much of the prop as I can, and just anchor that down a little bit better than hand tight. Okay, and you're going to take, remember I said you had them two screws there? Now here's some you got to be careful with. This is going to rock back. This goes in the back plastic. You're going to drop that screw down there. Do not over tighten that screw. If you over tighten that screw, you can push it through that plastic and now your adapter will not stay on okay so don't don't tighten just get it nice and snug on there that's all you want to do get it nice and snug on there and the nice thing is that there's a little hole there a little, a little vent there so you can kind of see what you're doing now hold the model you're looking at the seam here Hope it, if it's designed right, should the stopping point should be also at the back of the. There we go. All right, that's on there. Good looking prop too, by the way. Okay, grab 
Grab your back plate, push that on there. The blade towards you, in other words, the blade would go away from you. I'll rotate counterclockwise. I kind of have to, I have to fight with it a little bit. But it'll go on there. All right, I'm back. Fought with it, fought with it. I finally got that one, that prop back off of there. But that's basically the uh, basic build of the uh, 1.8 meter or 1800 millimeter uh, Mexfly Twin Otter. No decals to involve, entirely screws together. The servos are hidden inside the wings, so it's a nice touch. Reminds me a lot of Fly Zone uh, products. And uh, next, next video will be the radio set, which will be very simple. And I'll be using a AR620 Antilus receiver. All right. Stay tuned for the next video. Y'all have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. And don't forget, they found me and friends in the big old yellow and blue planes. Or the gator colors. Bye-bye.